Right, hello. <laughs> I uh, have recently bought this DJI 2 Pocket um, little camera. It's pretty amazing actually. Um, it enables me to take some videos like this where I can do a little bit more vlogging um, without the limitations of a camera phone. And uh, yes, I think I will try to I'm terrible at this because I really don't like social media or online that much so I it takes a lot for me to try and edit things and get them out there but I'm going to try I'm going to do my best I've got a few projects that have been sitting on the bench for a while and spring is here so I'm going to be attempting to get some of those some of those things done now one of them is that we're just approaching right now so I'm just going to flip the screen so cool isn't it just the way you can do that um, so we're just down by the down by the lake these are some old rafts that my stepdad was working on he was going to have them like fishing rafts but I don't know what's going to happen there but this is the structure that I part finished last year now this is eventually going to be a outdoor cooking hangout chill out somewhere I can do full day foraging courses and cook over a fire or something like that um, so I'm going to be working on that I've got to get that finished and uh, try and try and finish that before the 21st of March which isn't very long away now because on the 21st of March I am taking part in a 100% wild food diet which means that I won't be able to eat anything else at all apart from apart from wild food. Now I'm quite excited about this because I used to be, I mean if you look way back in my feeds, especially on Facebook, you'll see how much I was eating wild. Um, in the summer it must have been around 70% with the raw milk that I was getting from either the goats that we had at the time or raw milk from places that had grass-fed Jersey cows so you get the high butterfat milk. Now I still drink that at the moment and I forage seasonally um, not as much as I should be doing really I must admit. Um, I kind of slacked a little bit over lockdown and Covid and all that stuff that happened I kind of dropped some of my routines because of be because you weren't allowed to go outside, you weren't allowed to do this and that and I just kind of I lost the habit and I lost a little bit of motivation back then. So I've so I have made the decision to try and push back into those routines. The last year I spent the last year in 2022 was mostly spent just getting back into rhythm, getting back into what I what I used to do what I what I was um, a big part of my lifestyle and um, and it feels and it feels good and this wild food diet is kind of like partially incentive for that but also Monica Wilde who is um, who kind of did a lot of work in putting this together and reaching out to people who were going to like Zoe who are um, who was doing the glucose tests blood glucose tests gut tests blood fat tests they're doing all that for us and um, and we're, we're at the moment we're getting funding as well which I'm going to link down in the description um, GoFundMe so if you'd like to see what happens over this amazing study and how our guts change over wild food and these this GoFundMe page is to raise the funds for being able to do nutritional blood tests hormone blood tests so this will give us amazing data that we can um, that has not been done before really it's not really been studied so if you're fascinated by how wild food affects us and affects our bodies um, please 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 go ahead and donate in the GoFundMe even if it's just the price of a coffee everything goes towards this project I mean us who are taking part the 26 volunteers are all doing it um, voluntarily so none of us are we're funding our own our own wild food adventures <laughs> so um so yeah so so, so that's that's so what i've been doing in the process is um as you can see um as i'm talking i've been 
I've been leaching acorns. I've been I collected about 50 kilograms of acorns over winter. Some of that weight was from a couple of winters ago, and um, so I've been leaching that. And I've been doing it in a, in a slightly different way than I did before. I used to grind it down into a flour, um, and then and then and then uh, leach it that way. It was it leached a lot quicker, but I'd lose a lot of starch. So I've tried doing it slightly differently, where I do it in larger chunks. And by doing it this way, hopefully I will be able to um, I will be able to keep the starch in the larger pieces. And it did kind of work out. Um, I ended up with uh, I boiled a little bit up in some water just to see if the starch started to bind the acorn meal. And it did. So I added a little bit of honey to that. It was not the tastiest thing, but it is something that I can eat if I need something for quick calories, porridge in the morning, and uh, and it worked. This is the this is the garlic patch that I planted a few winters ago. During the first year of lockdown, I thought, okay, I'm going to introduce some species to the to the nature reserve. And um, the wild garlic is taking off quite well. I planted 3,000 bulbs here, and it is, it is, uh, it's taking off. So we're going to hopefully um, have a good bounty of that over the wild food thing. Now, in here, it's interesting actually because you have shorter growing wild garlic and you have longer growing wild garlic. This came out earlier. This is from up north and this has always been here so it's uh, it's quite interesting to see the different growth rates and also this wild garlic that is down here is a lot stronger and more pungent than the northern <laughs> variety which is which is quite fascinating so as we as we walk up here we're just going to go towards the stream now that stream dried up over last summer during the drought which was the first time it dried up over my lifetime <laughs> living here. So I've been collecting birch sap, uh, I've, been, I've been gathering birch sap so that I can hopefully during this wild food diet is to use that as a source of sugar because um, with the birch sap flowing one year I only tapped five trees and I ended up with I ended up with about 250 litres of birch sap in a week. So um, out of every 100 litres of birch sap, you should get, I think it was one litre. Um, I forget, but you should get around one litre of, of um, syrup. So that's going to be an essential part of my carbohydrate intake because roots and things like that, they're not that easy to gather in the wild. So I'm going to be experimenting with other things which I'll introduce you to. Hopefully um, I plan to document this journey in vlogs and that's why I kind of bought this DJI camera as a kind of incentive to take more videos and start vlogging and showing exactly what I'm doing with, with this diet. Here is our stream. So I will start drinking from this water source again. I used to drink from this without even filtration. I used to drink straight out of here for about three years straight and no problems at all. Now, whether the water shrimp are still in here after the stream dried out last year would be interesting to find out. But um, it's very clean water. It runs, it runs through leaves and mud and roots and it filters itself um, naturally. Um, I did do a test on it a little while ago, just a simple dip test with a stick, one of those sticks that tests for certain things, and it appeared to be very, very clean. It's definitely not chlorinated, so it's not from drains off the mains water supply. So, um, yeah, this is going to be my wild water source during the wild food diet. So that's, uh, that's about it for now, I think. I'll try and keep you updated on the progress of the various projects that I will be getting up to. And if you're interested in following this wild food, 100% wild food journey, 
then please don't forget to like, subscribe and, um, and tune in. And lastly, look at the state of my caravan. Um, <laughs> this used to be the big hub of where I used to do all the foraging things and do the prep work and food work. The only thing that's still intact that I've kept somewhat tidy is my wild food store. Um, so the plan is to kind of get all this cleaned out, tidy it up a little bit, a little bit so I can move back into doing wild food things in the caravan on rainy days and on good days we'll use the outdoor shelter um, for, uh, for all of that stuff. So <laughs> yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video and I will try and post another one very, very soon. So bye for now.